Okay, so this is a 2011 YZ450F, uh, and we've got a no spark issue. And I've gone through and I've uh, followed the uh, repair manual uh, to try and diagnose and uh, figure out what it is. And I think I've got them figured out, but I'll go ahead and uh, recap it for uh, anybody else because this did help me out and maybe it'll help somebody else out. And I know the 2010 and 2011 are identical engines and components and basically the same bike. So it might enter translate to others, but for sure the 2010 and 2011. Um, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'll try and, and I'm using a snap-on <coughs> uh, ohm meter, which is automatic. The manual gives you some specifics that you have to set the ohm meter at, but this one takes a lot of that guesswork out. Uh, so hang on, and we'll be right back with the first thing they say to test. Okay, so first thing in the manual is checking the uh, couplers and the leads after you verify you don't have spark. Um, and then the first thing to check is the uh, ignition stop switch. Um, it should read, let's see, where are we at? Oh, it should read uh, conductive when it's pushed and non-conductive <coughs> when it's, uh, when you're not pushing it. So I'll dig out that uh, terminal and we'll be right back. Okay, so right under your airbox there, this is the lead. It goes in there. You'll pull that, you'll pull this little jobby there. I don't know if you can see it moving. Grab my big tool. There, that, okay. You'll grab that and pull to you and then pull this lead out. Now, I'm gonna do try and do this one-handed, but I may have to freeze what the tool's doing. Right now, it's just set to ohms, <coughs> and it's automatic, so it'll detect whatever resistance is in there, and uh, I'll be right back. Oops. Okay, so I've got both leads in there, and right now, it's not showing any uh, uh, what? Conductive. This shows it being open. I'm going to try and hold you up here with my knees. And then push the button. And we've got point two. So, kill switch is working. Okay, so the next step <coughs> is checking the ignition coil. Uh, primary primary resistance, primary coil resistance, and they say it should be just at ohms times one in that parameter on a cold engine. Um, and for that, you're going to just specifically connect, uh, looks like, your hot side to the one terminal and then the negative to the two. And I've already disconnected my coil there it's a connection that's tucked up in there but then you compare your photo to that oops to that and i'll go ahead and try and test those and show you how that comes okay so i got them both in there on the coil and it's reading 4.3 to 4.2 and it wants to be 357 to 483, so the primary resistance is fine on the coil. So now we check the secondary resistance, and for that, uh, hang on. Okay, back. So for that, you're going to go off of that first terminal with positive again, and then your negative is going to go inside the spark. You're going to have to take your boot off. Mine's already off. It'll just twist off. Uh, Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And that'll leave you an exposed... Uh, it'll leave you an exposed wire. 
So you'll run those leads there. Now I've already tested this one and this one is wild, wildly uh, off parameter. You'll test it once and it's way high, wiggle the connections, then it's out of the, it's low, it's too low, and then you wiggle the connection again. And so you get to looking in there and there's a bunch of green crusties in there and in the uh, boot too. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to see in there. Anyway, it, it's in there too. So I elected to replace the coil and replace the boot because I can't stop the corrosion that's in there. Um, but that's essentially what you would do to test the coil. If you test there and you're fine, then you move on to the magneto. And I'll dig that up in just a second. Okay, so the crankshaft pin position sensor is going to be the next thing you check. They show it. It's tucked behind the radiator mount, so you've got to pull all that out. There's a plug right there. And we'll go off the visual for that one. And get the resistance on that. It doesn't look like it has to be set a specific way. Just If you've got a, if you don't have an automatic ohm meter, set it to 100 ohm and uh, it should be in this parameter on a cold engine and we'll be right back okay leads in and oh, right yeah 292.3 I think before I had like 294 so that is good because it's supposed to be but ah, where'd he go there between 248 and 372 Okay, so stator is going to be this lead right here, and the stator resistance is going to be between 0.6 and 0.9, ohm meter set at 10, cold engine. Okay, so mine settles in at 0.8, and that's the connection, and your parameters or there. It's kind of right at the threshold. I don't know if that's good or bad, high or low. <coughs> um, yeah, so then we move on. So the last thing you're going to do is check the connections on the ECU, which is mounted behind the uh, number plate. And this one, when I pulled the plate off, this bracket was bent clear the heck around. It was jamming everything into the side. So this thing has taken a hell of a hit. Um, even rubber mounted. Um, I didn't want to risk it so I took it off and I ordered a used one uh, used ECU because the factory doesn't even make them. They're not available anymore. <coughs> um, and I ordered the coil new OEM and I ordered the spark plug boot OEM. So when those show up, we'll do a part two on it and see if we can get it to fire with the old ECM. But I almost bet this thing just has had 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 enough after that impact. And sometimes it takes a little while. But anyway, that's that and uh, look for part two.